I am live. Good, right. So what I'm going to do first is share the link with some other people onto Rid's social media. So let's have a look at this YouTube and see if we can see, there it is. And turn the sound off and we'll have the link. Good, there I am. Hello there, my name's George Covine and I'm going to do some cooking this evening. But first, I'm going to share this link. Hello there, thank you for joining. I'm going to share the link with the YouTube and the Twitter first, and then we can get going. Here we go, putting it onto the Facebook. Activate, yes, now that's gone onto the Facebook. Hello there, thank you very much for joining. The George Coburn Cooking Show, live. Just going to do a tweet into the Twitter sphere and a what a WhatsApp message. Here we go. Yes, just pop that in there. Beautiful. Right. So, my name is George Cobra, and um, what I'm going to be doing for you this evening is a is a cooking show. Now, I'm going to wait until 7 p.m. because that's when I said I would start the show. Um, so, before I do that, let's just show you a little bit about where I am. And then 7 p.m. I'll get started with a proper introduction. So, do say hello. If you can comment, you know, do just do a little comment and say hello. That would be lovely. Um, let's have a look around. So, this is a kitchen. Got some ingredients, we'll look at those later. We've got some peppermint tea. Lovely peppermint tea. We've got a silly little... Uh, oh dear. Drop that. Let's look out to that. We've got a uh, teapot here. Very nice. If you've not um, met me before, my name is George Coburn. I'm a Cambridge man. Oh, hello. Hello, Sardi Soul Arts. Thank you very much for joining me. Wonderful. So we're just going to wait a couple of minutes to see if anyone else joins in because I did say 7 p.m. and I've started a little bit early. And I started a little bit early because I just wanted to send the link out into the Twitter sphere and onto the Facebook. Um, just in case, you know, people might need the link so they could find me if they're not up to speed with using YouTube. Um, I'm, you know, getting used to using YouTube. I don't really um, watch much YouTube. I prefer reading, reading books, novels, um, and the newspaper. Um, so it's not, you know, entirely my field, this, but that's why I'm finding it quite exciting, doing these live streams. Now, this is only the second YouTube stream I have ever done, but I have actually done some Instagram ones in the past, so you may have seen those. Um, so yes, we're just waiting until 7 p.m. I think it is almost 7 p.m. So we can almost get started with the George Coburn cooking show. Yes. Right, let's get cracking because it is... Let's have a look. Oh, it's two minutes past seven, actually, says my watch. Right, okay, let's get cracking. Um, so, let's introduce you to the George Coburn cooking show. Ah, oh, here we are, we've got a comment, so let's just read that out. I heard my niece is a fan of yours now, so she might be joining, but she might be busy eating. Well, it might be a good idea to eat before this show, I don't know, because this show is going to make you very hungry. Christian says lovely kitchen. Fantastic, it, it is a lovely kitchen, isn't it? Right, so, what I'm going to do now is introduce myself. So some of you may have seen my show before, some of you may not have seen my show. Now, my name is George Coburn. I'm a man, I live in Cambridge, and I have a wife called Petunia. I also have a son called Stephen. No, my son is called Jeremy, and the dog is called Stephen. Now, the reason I got confused is because I'm quite angry with my son, Jeremy, at the moment. And I'm not a big fan of the dog, to be honest. 
So sometimes I do get their names confused. Um, Jeremy is a teenager. Um, he plays a lot of video games. He's playing the PlayStation right now. Um, the PlayStation 4. Uh, I don't really play video games, but he does. Anyway, so that's me. Now, you may have seen my show before, and if you have, you will notice that I'm actually in a different kitchen to what I'm usually in. This kitchen looks different to my usual kitchen. Now, this is because this is not my kitchen. No, no, it's not my kitchen. Now, the reason for that is, let me tell you a little story about why I'm not going to be cooking in my kitchen today. Now, last week, Wednesday, the 14th of February, this time last week, it was Valentine's Day, and I planned to make a meal for my wife, Petunia. Now, Petunia, those of you who have seen this before, will know that Petunia, my wife, does not know that I like cooking. I haven't told her that I cook. I do it in secret. So far, whenever she's gone to walk the dog, Stephen, I have done the cooking in secret while she was out. Now, on Valentine's Day last week, I wanted to surprise her. So I prepared a wonderful meal for her. I've been practicing all this cooking in secret, in secret, and I was going to cook this wonderful meal for her. But I received a text, and she said, George, you know what? I don't care for Valentine's Day. I don't think it's a thing. I don't think it's important. So actually, this evening, I am not coming home. I am going to be at a friend's house. And I got that text quite late in the day. I was quite upset about it. And I had to spend Valentine's Day alone in my house. Um, and yes, I was quite upset about it. So I've still not told Petunia that actually um, that's what I was going to do. Um, and now, you know, it's a bit rocky. Uh, we've had a difficult week and she's not in this evening. So I don't really want to be home alone. So what I did was I messaged my friends. I have some good friends, um, Jean-Pierre and Julieta. They are my good friends and they have allowed me to use their kitchen. They said, come over, come on over, George, come to our house and cook for us. Because I said, you know, I want to do this cooking show. And they said, come on over to our house and you can cook here. And once you cook the meal, we can enjoy it together. Now, they don't want to be in the live stream, but we are going to enjoy the pizza with them later. Like, I will be, but you won't be. But you will be enjoying my, my cooking. You will be able to see how I cook. And what am I going to be cooking? I am going to be cooking pizza. I am going to show you all how to cook pizza. Okay, right. So... Let's have a look, a little look at the ingredients, shall we? Come on, let's get cracking now. What time is it now? Yes, we're getting on. Time is getting on, it's about six past seven. Lovely, so, lovely jobs. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the ingredients. So let's swap this camera over. I believe we do this here. Okay, excellent, here we have it. So, these are some of the ingredients for the pizza that I'm going to be cooking for you. Now, the thing is, let me tell you a little bit about my friends, uh, Julia and Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre is French and he loves cheese. He absolutely loves cheese. And, uh, and that's Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre is a tour guide. I am also a tour guide. That is my job. I show people around Cambridge. And that's how I met Jean-Pierre. Um, Julieta, his wife, is also a tour guide. I met them at the annual tour guide uh, convention. So that's how I know them. We're really good friends. And Julieta uh, is a vegan. Um, and Jean-Pierre is gluten intolerant. So if we have a look at this pizza base here, you know, it's quite difficult to provide food for uh, vegans and gluten intolerant people, um, you know, but the, I think, you know, what I'm interested in cooking, I want to do some kind of different cooking, you know, because Petunia is quite fussy or quite, she's, you know, she likes 
meat and two veg. My petunia does. And actually she does all the cooking. As I said earlier, she doesn't know that I do cooking. So let's have a look at the ingredients. Now, I have found a pizza base that is actually gluten-free and it's actually also vegan friendly. So isn't that wonderful? There is no eggs, no milk, and it is also palm oil free. Now, palm oil is also quite bad for the environment. So, so this is fantastic. This is, you know, a wonderful uh, pizza base that all people can buy. Um, I bought this from a Cambridge store, Arjuna. It is a vegetarian shop. Very good, at the bottom of Mill Road, so quite near my house. And uh, yes, that's where you can get that. So I'm not making my own pizza base. That is far too much effort. Absolutely not going to be doing that today, but I'm going to be doing it homemade otherwise. And it's going to be suitable for vegans and um, gluten intolerant people. So it's something a bit different, you know? Petunia would never cook this for me. Um, but I would be, you know, I'd like her for, to, for her to try it. So let's have a go at this. Um, uh, let's have a look at everything else. We have got tomato puree. I was worried I was not going to have enough there, so I've got a, a, a bonus one. A backup of tomato puree. I've also got oregano. Mmm, lovely oregano. That's essential for pizza. I've also got some oil. That will come into play later. What sort of veg have I got? Here we go. Got some peppers, some onion, and I've also got spinach. Oh dear, I've just flipped that all over the, the side there. Oh well, okay, great. Right, so let's get cracking. I'm going to show you how to actually cook the pizza. Here we go. So yes, as I said, Petunia is a meat and two veg woman. She doesn't quite you know, believe in vegan cooking. And I'm also a, a meat eater. I eat meat because, like I say, um, Petunia does the cooking and, oh, okay. Well, that's an interesting shape, isn't it? Oh dear. Look at that. Well, it's sort of fallen apart a little bit. What a shame. Okay, well, that's um, interesting. So let's get the box out of the way. Let's have a quick look at the top of the box because that might give us some information. That's upside down. Now it says 180 degrees. Now preheat your oven, which you must do. Here we go, we preheated the oven. You can turn this knob up and down and you can see that changes the heat. We've got 3D hot air as opposed to normal hot air. So three dimensions of hot air going on in this oven. Isn't that fantastic? So, um, 180 degrees, and then you put the sauce on, it says. Then you put the toppings on, and then you place it in the oven for eight minutes. And then you cut it up. Good, right, so we know what we're doing. Excellent. Let's put you down for a second. Let's turn this round. Right, I'm going to open this package up. Right. Here we go. Now it's interesting, it's, it's actually quite difficult to find um, a gluten-free pizza base already made. It's also, sometimes you find a pizza base that's already made and it has milk in it. Can you believe that? When I was looking around for pizza bases, I found pizza bases that had milk in. I just couldn't, I just don't know why they would put milk in a pizza base. I mean, I drink, I drink milk, don't get me wrong. My wife, Petunia, she says, you must have milk. Milk is good for you. She must have it in a cup of tea. Every cup of tea she has, you must have milk, she says. She has a lot of milk in her tea. I don't have much. Right, now that's the pizza base. Um, it actually, ah, oh, I think there's two. Look, two pizza bases. Well, that's quite good, isn't it? Very nice. I'm quite pleased with that, actually. I thought it was just going to be one. So we've got two in there. You can see it's, it's been made by Anna. And the taste of it, it, Italia. Art, arti gia, gianal. Arti gianal. Vegan friendly. Fantastic. Okay. 
So weirdly though, it has pictures of prawns and meat on the back. So, um, well, yes, I suppose you could have, you know, if you're just vegan, uh, you know, gluten intolerant, you could have, uh, you know, some meat on there if you like. But I'm not going to do that because, like I say, Julieta is a vegan. Um, so, great. Let's get cracking with the, um, the pizza base. Which one should we go with? Let's go with that one. We'll put that one on the side. We'll use that later. Right, I've just broken that one. Right, so that's my first top tip. You must be careful with your pizza base, especially if it's gluten-free. Gluten-free stuff tends to uh, fall apart a little bit. So, let's put that down there so you can see. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually get the um, tomato onto the base. Now you've squeezed the tomato out onto the base. This is the first thing that you've got to do. Make sure you've got your oven preheated. For goodness sake, get your oven preheated. Because if you don't get your oven preheated, you know, once you've made your pizza, you've then got to go and bloody get your oven heated. And that can take a, a jolly long time, you know? Okay, so we squeeze this, get your thumbs right in there. Oh, shit. Right, okay. I just, you know, excuse fingers. I mean, it's quite a messy job. And what I like to do here, I like to get a spoon to actually put this in. Could you just use tomato ketchup? Now, that's quite interesting. Yes, um, who is this? Blue crayon. Blue crayon 77. Yes, you could just use tomato ketchup if you like. Um, but I like to go for uh, tomato puree. Now I go for tomato puree because it's, it's um, thicker, you see. It has a, a slightly richer taste to it. So here we go, tomato puree. Uh, you can also use passata if you like. So we're putting that uh, tomato puree. Now as soon as you mention ketchup, I am actually going to put some ketchup in there. Have a look at that. Now this one's red and green tomatoes. Now have you ever heard of green ones? Isn't that fantastic? So actually it looks like I did actually have enough puree. So that's fantastic news. So yes, let's go for it. Uh, Blue Crayon, I'm taking on your suggestion of putting on some tomato ketchup. Now if you don't have tomato puree, yes, you can just use ketchup, any kind of ketchup. Doesn't need to be red and green. It can just be normal green. So here we go. Let's put some of this on. Now what you need to do here, let, watch my technique. This is very important. I did this for the puree, but I don't think I announced it. So what's this? Oh, shit, I just dropped the oil, but don't worry about that. Um, what you need to do is just give it a good swirl. Like, oh shit, I missed. Yes, I did miss, but what, you give it a swirl. You, you make sure it goes all over the shop. Okay, give a good spread. We like a good even spread on a pizza. So now we've got, actually got a combination of tomato puree and tomato ketchup and red and green um, tomatoes. Now, ketchup is vegan. Uh, tomato puree is vegan as well. So as you can see that's vegan. Yes, there we go. So um, you need a good even spread. Lovely, lovely, lovely. There, oh dear, look at that. What a mess. But that hasn't gone on the side, gone onto the plastic. You see, that's why I put that on top of the plastic so we haven't made a mess. Disregard these. We don't really want those. Those are just side bits. Excellent, the sauce is done. Good. Now the next most important ingredient is oregano. Here we have it. Oregano. The Americans, if you are an American, just eating a little bit of sauce there, if you do have a little bit of leftover sauce on your hands, do feel free just to eat it there and then. Uh, that's fine. Um, dried, the Americans call this ore oregano, ore oregano, I think, oregano. So if you're American and watching this, oregano. But actually it's called oregano. That's the, that's the actual proper word for it. Um, 
not, not anything against Americans, you can say words how you like, that's fine, but it is called oregano, okay? Um, good, so we'll get the oregano. What you need to do here is, um, there is a, uh, a little flap here. Actually, you've got two flaps. Interestingly, you've got two flaps. Not many things have got two flaps. What you, well, I don't know, some things do have two flaps. But, oregano is one of them, it has two flaps. Right, so here we go, here's one flap. Let's open both flaps and see what's going on underneath the flaps. Look at that, it's like a beautiful butterfly, except one of the wings is slightly smaller. So it's a sad butterfly. Well, I don't know, a handicapped butterfly, I don't know. It's a butterfly, it's got two wings, it's fine. And, and, and one of the wings is slightly smaller and that's okay. It's just like Finding Nemo, have you seen that film? He has a small fin and that's fine, it's okay. We're all different shapes and sizes. Right, so the flaps are now open. Now if you look at this flap, you will see that that has got a big hole, a big access hole. If you look at the other one, this one has got many little holes. Isn't that fascinating? That one has many little holes. Now the reason for that is, if you pour out of this hole, you will just get loads. You will just pour loads of, of oregano all over the place. Now we don't want that. We don't want oregano, all silly buggers, all over the pizza. We just want, we want a refined, we don't want too much. You know, if we go pouring out of that hole, out of that flap, you'll, you'll have oregano everywhere. And it will be too oregano, oregano -y. It will be too oregano -y. There will be too much oregano. Right, so we're going for this flap. The one with the holes. So, that's my top tip. Make sure you use the one with the holes here. Open that flap right. Now what we're gonna do, let's see if you can see that okay. We're gonna, class, yes, class indeed, thank you. Right, here we go, pour that on. Now you shake it, give it a good hard shaking. Remember I shake the milk for the, the um, the cereal, or the milk for the cereal, I gave that a good shake, didn't I? Right, that's enough. I don't know if you can see, oh, you can't. Right, let's switch this around. That, so can you see there, you can see you've got the oregano on there now. You don't want too much. Make sure your tomato goes right to the edges. There we are, excellent. Very, very good. Now that's it, that's fine. Now, some people at this stage, they like to add garlic. Now, I'm not going to add garlic. You can put like granules of garlic in there if you like. I'm not going to add garlic because that will give me garlicky breath. And I'm hoping to see Petunia later tonight. And I think if I have uh, garlicky breath, she won't be too pleased with me. Um, so, no garlic. But if you like garlic, and garlic is good, just get some garlic in there at this point. Just Get it all over the, um, if we have a look here. Get your garlic all on, in the sauce if you need to. Right, good. So that's that. Next up, we need to get some cheese. Now, if you remember, we are making a vegan pizza. So, we actually, we're not going to use um, cheese from milk from cow's boobs. We are going to be using vegan cheese. Now this is the vegan cheese I'll be using. I'll actually be using two different types of vegan cheese. Now, um, they have vegan cheese in this house. Now, I've actually never uh, tried vegan cheese. So let's give this a go. This one is a cheddar flavor block. Now I've heard that vegan cheese is not very good. Um, but this actually looks like a bit of cheese. You know, that looks kind of like a fine bit of cheese. That looks all right, doesn't it? That's, uh, and it actually says here, melts great. So that's good news, isn't it? So what I think, I've also got some slices. Now these are mozzarella sli style slices. And we know that um, mozzarella, mozzarella is the kind of cheese that, that we know that really does need to go on pizza. So, but we're making a vegan pizza today. And, um, 
We need vegan mozzarella for that. It's made from coconuts, I believe. Let's have a look. Yes, it's made with coconut oil, uh, the vegan cheese. If you're just joining us, I'm cooking a vegan pizza. My name is George Coburn. Um, right, you open this up like this. There we go. Pull that open. And uh, let's pull that back. And you can see we've got a nice, lovely slice there. Oh, oh, it smells. It smells good. I quite like the smell. You know, a smelly cheese. I wish this was smell vision and then you could smell. Um, okay, right, so let's switch this round and I'll show you how I place on. Hello, thank you for joining us. Um, right, I'm going to place on. We're making a pizza. Um, I put the tomato and the spices on the bottom. And now we're going to place the vegan cheese. Make sure you give it a little pat. Make sure you give the tomato a bit of a pat as well. Give that all a good pat. Put a little bit of secret tomato there. Excellent, good. Right, let's get all these out. Put them on. If you want to leave a comment and let me know what you like to put on your pizza, I would love to know. Here we go, we put a slice onto the pizza. I think we're going to need about four slices here. You don't need to cut them up or anything like that. These should just uh, melt quite fine. Here we go. Well, I hope so anyway. It's the first time I've ever used vegan cheese. Uh, good. Now we're going to put the cheddar cheese on. So let's pick up the grater. Let's see if this cheese wants to melt. Right. Put this on to selfie mode. That's how we go. Right. So this is called a cheese grater. And what you do with it is, well, you know, you go to cheese. Obviously. Um, if you don't have a cheese grater, you can pick one up. Right, so what you do, my technique is to have these facing upwards and the cheese against it like this. And then you just do this. I'm quite upset about Petunia. I wish I, wish I was cooking this for Petunia, to be honest. Petunia does like pizza. Um, but we don't have it often. She usually cooks uh, a meat. She likes lamb. She likes beef. Uh, beef wellington she does quite often. Um, lamb shank she does. I do like her meals. Um, but she does tend to cook the same thing every week. Um, we only really have pizza, you know, when we go out. But she still doesn't know that I like to cook. So I'd like to show her that I can cook um, maybe I can save some of this pizza and give it to Petunia later. Um, I don't know where she is this evening, but she said she's out. Petunia is my wife. If you're just tuning in, Petunia is my wife. I cooked for her last weekend. Or I was going, sorry, not weekend. Last Wednesday on Valentine's Day, I was going to cook for my wife, Petunia, but she wasn't there. I had to spend the time alone. Okay, here we go. Now you can see that I've grated this cheese. And I put it on top of the mozzarella. There we go. This is vegan cheese, Violife vegan cheese. Right, now what we've got is peppers and onions. Onions. Uh, we've also got some spinach right here. Uh, the other thing I'm going to use is olives. Now, where the bloody hell are the olives? There they are. There are the olives. Now, I really like olives. You might not. Not everyone enjoys olives. Okay, right. So it's time for a bit of a cooking tip. Now you can see that I have already chopped the pepper. So that is good. Let's move the pepper out of the way. Oh dear, chop that one on the side. Right, now this is an onion. I've selected a white one. You can go for red or green if you like. Now I'm going to show you how to chop this onion. Now, there's several different methods about chopping an onion. I'm going to show you quite a unique way. Okay, here we go. Now, what you might think you need to do is chop the bottom and chop the top. Um, you actually, what I'm going to say is you don't, don't chop the top. Do not chop the top of the onion. Don't. Do not do it. 
Thank you very much, Blue Crayon. I appreciate the support. I'm going to be fine. Enjoy work. Thank you for tuning in. Right, here we go. I'm cutting. Cut the bottom of the onion, yes. Definitely cut the bottom of the onion off. This knife is not terribly sharp. Right, chuck the bottom away. Put it in the green bin. You must chuck it in the green bin. This is where we put all the food, you see, and then that gets, you know, it biodegrades. That's what we want. If you put it in the bin, it will go to a uh, landfill. Okay, so we can take some of this off. Now, I only want to use half of the onion, so I'm going to chop it in half. But remember, do not cut this top bit off. You'll see why very shortly. Right, I'm going to cut it in half, making sure I do not chop that top bit off. Use your hand if you need to, give it a good slam. There we go. Now you can see I've chopped the onion in half, and I've got two pieces of onion. We don't need a whole onion, that would be far too much. And you can see I've still got this bit on the end. Now I'm going to pull off the skin. Pull the skin, this rough bit off, and you can see we've still got this end bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that end bit. You can see that? I'm going to hold on to that end bit, and that will save me, that will save my hands from getting hurt. I can hold it into place and not cut my hands. Right, so let's give this a go. Well, I can hold it there. Oh shit, I've done this wrong. Right, okay, no, fine. Look, what you're meant to do is actually chop this way. I'm going to dice the onion. So you cut it this way first. Oh no, I've really buggered this. Yeah, absolutely shit. Right, no, but the point is, I'm holding this, look, and it's not going anywhere, and it's chopping really well. And I'm not cutting myself. And that's now sliced and now you turn it to the side get this out the way because we don't want that bit and then you cut from there and then we can dice it you can see how easy that's dicing i'm uh, doing it in mere seconds you know usually this would take most people a lot longer than this chopping an onion um then i'm the knife is not very good it's usually i'm a lot better at this this bit we don't want Chuck that bit away. Um, and then we've got some wonderfully diced onion. You can see that's very cleanly diced. You know, all similar sizes, etc. Uh, that's gone pretty well, I think. It could have gone better. Uh, let's just chop that bit as well. Very nice. So now we've got the onion. And we've got the pepper. Here we go. Now when I open the pepper, look, you can see the pepper actually had a little baby pepper inside it. How wonderful is that? Look at that. Now my top tip for you is you can actually eat that. You can eat the, the little peppers that come inside peppers. Because they're peppers too, they're just smaller. So let me show you. Let's have a little go at that. Oh dear, let me drop the camera. So, this is a little pepper that came in. Oh, you're cooking as well, Carl Peck. Good stuff. What are you cooking? Tell us about it. Right, I'm now going to try the little mini pepper that came inside the other pepper. That's what this is. Let's have a little work. Absolutely delicious. Tastes just like pepper. It tastes sweeter, actually. So if you find a pepper inside your pepper, eat that pepper. It's fine, do not chuck it away. You know, make use of every single little bit of your pepper. That would be my advice to you. You can see with this pepper here, you know, there's not much left behind. That's the seeds, the white bits, not very good. I pretty much cut everything off that pepper that I'm going to use. Roast tomato and red pepper gnocchi. Oh, well, that just sounds delightful. Now, Carl Peck, you must send me the recipe for that. Maybe I will include it on a future show, on the George Coburn cooking show. But for today, we're going to be cooking pizza, and let's continue, continue doing that. 
Okay, excellent. We're basically there now. We're ready for the fun bit. Now we're going to throw on... You remember from my cooking show, if you did see the, the lunch episode with the noodles, I have a particular technique with my vegetables. And it's called chuck it on. Here we go. You pick up your onions. And what you do, you grasp them in, in your hand and you chuck it on. Ooh. You chuck it on. So if you chuck it on, what you can see is actually it just sort of lands in different areas on the pizza. Isn't that wonderful? Right, here we go. Uh, here we go, and chuck it on. Look at that. Absolutely wonderful. Let's get the pepper. And you cl clasp it in your hand like this. Give it a good gripping, but then release your grip. As your elbow gets to sort of that point there, release your grip on said veg. And there it goes. There we go. Look at that. Right, let's get all that pepper on there. Chuck it on. Right, they've probably done a little bit too much pepper there. But we've got some for later. Excellent, right. And if you do want to, I might just use up this, you see the sauce here? I'm just going to eat some of that sauce. Hmm. Pepper and ketchup. Oh, that was, that was a lot of ketchup, actually. That, that was not ideal. Okay. Um, good. So now we've got the cheese. Vegan mozzarella, vegan cheddar, peppers, onion. Now what I'm going to do now is add the olives. Now do you like olives? Just let me know if you like olives or not. We do, we love olives in this house. My friend, um, my friend Julieta, she is Spanish. The Spanish do love their olives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a fork so I can get that out. Let's get a fork. Leave that over here. So Julieta is Spanish. Jean Pierre is French. Jean Pierre loves his cheese. These are the these are the friends whose house I'm in, by the way. Jean Pierre loves his cheese, but um, Julieta is vegan, and she thinks you know cheese is not good. But they get on really well despite this. They are married and they get on very, very well. And it, it fascinates me actually because, well, I quite envy it because um, Petunia is an avid meat eater. I like meat, it's fine. Um, but she will not cook a vegetarian meal. She simply will not do it. Um, and that's why I've sort of started cooking vegetarian meals because I, I've never really had them. I've never really done them. And I, I'm a bit afraid of cooking meat, I have to say. Um, I'm adding a little bit more cheese on top. Um, adding a little bit, a few more olives. Let's bring the camera down a little bit so you can see that. There we go. Right, now with the olives, I'm letting them drain a little bit. I'm using a fork so the water or the brine can drain in between. And I'm going to place the olives as such. Now let's make like a... I don't know, should we make like a face? Let's do a face. Uh, let's have the eyes as olives and the mouth as peppers. There we go, a beautiful face. Doesn't really look like a face at all, does it? No, that's shit. I'm giving up on the face idea. If, if you like fun, I mean, I like fun too, but I, apparently I'm not very good at it. Uh, you love olives, especially black ones. Yes, black olives are absolutely delicious, aren't they? But the trouble with them is, they're a bit more expensive, aren't they? The black ones. They're worth it, don't get me wrong. But if you're on a budget, this is quite a good dish. You can get cheaper brands of vegan cheese, if you like. Right, okay, that's almost done. Well, actually, that's pretty much ready to go. Excellent. Right, so let's have a quick close-up look at that. Now, that is pretty much there. You want an even distribution of your ingredients. Make sure you've got a bit of everything everywhere, unless you're putting a face on your pizza. Um, good. Uh, yes, we've got cheese all around. If you're going to cut it into eighths or quarters or whatever, just make sure you've got enough 
of each ingredient. If someone doesn't like olives, maybe you just put some olives on one side, and then the other side you don't have olives, and then, you know, then everyone's happy. You know, the person who likes olives can be like, oh, great, I've got my, I'll have the olive slice, and the person who doesn't has the slice without. Now, we have also got the spinach, but that's going to come in later. Now, here comes a really interesting part. I have got this. Now, this is quite fantastic, this stuff. This is olive oil. Now, you wouldn't have thought so, would you? You'd look at that and you'd think, well, that's not... That's a spray, isn't it? That's a cleaning spray, isn't it, George? What you've got there is a cleaning spray. No, that is not a cleaning spray, although it does look like one. Well, if you look out close, that says olive oil. Now, it's a spray. Isn't that wonderful? Now, here's a big tip for cooking pizza. What you want to do is actually cover the ingredients with oil. Now, the spray is incredible because if you, if you attempt to pour on um, a oil, let's have a little look. I'm going to grab some oil. Now I've got this uh, sunflower oil. If I was going to pour that on, I'm going to, I've got to pour a little bit on, but then what you get is just a big clump of oil just sitting there, you see? And that's loads. You don't want that much oil. What you need is a good spray. So, what you do here is you push your, put your finger on the top of the spray. Did you see that? The finger on the top. Don't know if you've done sprays before, but this is how you do them. You put your finger on the top of the spray. There's a little hole here. And what happens when you push on, on the top here is the, the oil will spray out of the oil. You can hear that, can't you? There we go. Now that's spraying. You can see it spraying onto my pizza. And what that will do, now we've got some oil on top. Ah, there we go. That's better. I think there's not very much left. So you have to sort of, you know, rotate it a little bit. If you've got not much left in your spray, you know, give it a little bit of rotation. Um, there we go. Yes, see that's spray now. Now, you can see that's now nicely coated in oil. And what that will do is that will actually cook your ingredients on top as well as underneath. And with the oven, we've got the 3D heat option. 3D, so that's going to heat all the, all the three dimensions of the pizza there. Um, and that is, that's it, basically. That's my pizza ready to go. Uh, so let's put it in the oven. Let's do it, shall we? Okay, right, let's put you on a, a thing here, and let's put it on selfie mode. Oh, so, hang on. Yes, there we go. Selfie mode, pizza. Right, what I've got to do now is get the pizza into the oven. Now, this is very important. I think a gluten-free, this is a gluten-free pizza base. Yes, good thinking, Sadi. Sadi says you could refill the spray bottle with other oil if you need more later. What a wonderful tip. So look, now I've got the spray. If this runs out, I could just pour some in there, and then I could just spray some more. Well, that's spray quite well now. But yes, wonderful tip, Sadi. Good thinking. Thank you very much for tuning in. Right, so what I'm going to do now is attempt to pick up this pizza and then put it into the oven. Now gluten free base, you can see what happened to my last base. That one has a big rip in it. So I'm quite concerned about this. Ah, that's, that seems okay. Seems quite heavy. Ah, I can pick that up, yes. There we go, some of my toppings are falling off, but that's okay, I can always place them back on later. There we go. I recommend you take your time with this. Don't, don't throw it around. You're not making the dough. I didn't make the dough. I don't expect you to make the dough either. Right, so let's put, the, put that there. This is the oven I'm going to put it into. Ooh, let's have a look at a little factoid here from Carl Peck. Did you know that black olives, the proper black ones, are actually green olives that have been oxygenated to change their color. I did not know that, Carl. 
Did everyone else know that? Isn't that fascinating? I thought they were completely different olives. They taste very good though. Ah, the purple ones, however, are actually different olives. Those are the expensive ones, the purple ones, the cat catamanalian, the catamanalian uh, olives uh, from Catamanalia. Um, yes. So, what we're going to do is open up the oven, like so. Now make sure you don't put your hands inside the oven for too long. Do not touch this bit. If you touch that bit, this oven is very hot. 180 degrees centigrade, that is, for American. 180 degrees centigrade, that is very hot. If I was to touch that metal now, I would burn my hands. Do not do that. Here we go, right. All right, so I'm going to, you open up the oven like this, do not put your hands in it. A tray or plate. I could do that. I'm going to not do that. Sadi's saying you get it onto a tray or plate, you could do that. I'm not going to. I think I can handle this, Sadi. I think I've got it. I think I can pick up this pizza and get it in. Don't you worry about me. It'll be fine. Right, here we go. Uh, I know you can't see this, but I'm getting the pizza into my hands. Yes, shit. Right. No, it's okay. I know you can't see. Everything's fine. I just had a little bit of topping fall off. And here it is. Here we go. The pizza is going in. You can see little bits hanging off the sides. Don't worry about that. That's fine. And now let's put the oven oven. Let's put the pizza into the oven. The George Coburn cooking show. You're joining the George Coburn cooking show where I'm about to put a vegan gluten free vegan pizza into my oven at 180 degrees centigrade. Thank you for joining. Let's see what happens here. So you want to get it onto that um, tray. You don't put it at the bottom. You put it in the middle of your oven. The middle, not the bottom, not the top the middle. There we go. So I'm getting the I'm getting the top of the pizza in and yes I'm sliding that forward. Some of the cheese has come off here on the side and that's melted. Let's get a close up. You can see some of the cheese here. Uh, you see my little finger there. Some of the cheese has come off. That's instantly melted. You could see how hot that is. Uh, let's flip it round now. Oh! oh! Oh, I just... I Now, I just touched my hand on the inside of the oven there. And actually, that quite hurt. I gave out a little scream, and that's because it was... Um, you know, I, I, that was very hot. So don't touch the inside of the oven here, Eva. Do not touch any of this. This has all been inside the oven, remember? This is hot. Do not touch this bit. Okay, if you could see that, you could see some of the cheese is melting already. Uh, here we go. Now, that's not really properly in yet, so I'm going to give it a poke. Let's give it a good poke. Well, pokes aren't really working. So I'm going to get, pull, it, pull it over to the side, and there we have it. That's gone further in. Now, I might need to use some kind of implement to push that further in. So, what have we got here? This isn't my house, so... I don't know where anything is. I'm going to use a spoon with some holes in. So, let's just push that in. There we go. And now the pizza is in the oven. Now what you must do is shut the oven. Make sure you shut the oven. Now if you, if you, now let's have a look at this. Now, press the start button. Let's do that. Thank you very much. Catch you later, Sadi. Thank you for joining the George Coburn cooking show. I really appreciate it. You could see that the heat is actually reduced now. Do you know why that is? The heat has reduced because we had the door open. And what happens when you open the door is it releases the heat and your oven gets colder. So for goodness sake, do get that, that pizza in quickly. Um, shut the door quickly, like so. This door is now shut. Now, we're going to want to wait for eight minutes here. Um, now, what time is it? It says it's 7.41. So, eight minutes, 7.41.
So now, uh, the nice thing about this, a pizza, the cooking, is, you know, it's all in the preparation. We've prepared the pizza, we put the ingredients on top, um, now we've got a bit of a mess. What you could do now, look, we've got some leftover bits, so we've got a bit of pepper, a bit of onion. Now I really wish, look at, um, look at the pizza, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? What we could do is chuck this on. That was close. Um, right, I've successfully chucked on more toppings. That's what you can do when you're making a pizza. The, it's in the oven, but you can actually throw stuff in in between. Um, so that's what I've done. Now I'm really proud of the pizza. I just, I think it looks fantastic. And I really wish, I hope I can keep a hold of it um, for Petunia. Um, I think she might, I think she would have quite enjoyed this evening, but Obviously, she has decided not to join me. Um, so, I, I, I wonder if you could, while we're waiting for the pizza to, to cook, I wonder if you could offer me some advice. Uh, Petunia, I'm just uh, doing some tidying here now. Petunia sounds hot. Oh, yes. Well, thank you very much. Petunia is hot. Yes, I mean, that's not the term that I would use. And she wouldn't be pleased if you called her hot. Um, but yes, no, she is quite attractive, what you might uh, call a babe. Um, Petunia is very beautiful. Um, but yes, we are, um, I don't know, it's not going so well. Uh, this year, all of a sudden, she decided that uh, Valentine's Day was not for her. Uh, and I, I want to be able to cook for her, but she always does the cooking for me and she gets upset if I make any suggestions, you know, out of the ordinary. You know, every Tuesday night we have beef, um, and I say, can we just have some chicken this evening, please, Petunia? She says, no. No, we'll have beef just like always. That's what we shall have. Um, I should also mention, Petunia doesn't know I'm here. She's not at home, so I thought I wouldn't be at home either. I didn't want to be home alone. But yes, Petunia doesn't like... So I'm at my friend Julieta and Jean-Pierre's house. And uh, Petunia doesn't like them. We had a dinner party with them one time and we had an argument about Brexit. Now, Petunia voted to leave. Um, I did not. I voted to remain because I believe in, in the EU. But Petunia felt that actually, you know, we... We need to gain our country back, so she says. Um, and, of course, Julieta, uh, being Spanish, and Jean-Pierre, being French, they, they, you know, felt strongly that, you know, Britain should stay in the EU. So they had quite a big argument. But this is difficult for me because I love Petunia. Um, but I, we're struggling at the moment. And uh, I miss her. So I wonder if you could offer any pieces of advice of what you think I should do for Petunia um, to get things back on track. That would be most appreciated. Um, if you can offer any comments, I'm going to eat some pepper. What have we got on the time here? Ah, it's almost done. Right. Now we're going to get the spinach in. Now the spinach, obviously spinach cooked quite quickly. So you don't want that in right at the beginning. So let's bring, let's open this up. Remember, if you open it up, don't touch the side. I did that earlier and I burnt myself. Um, let's open it up. Um, right, you can see that's coming along quite well. Actually, the cheese is, appears to be melting, which is good. Right, let's get some spinach in there. Uh, right, let's go for the old chuck it on method. Pick up the spinach. Now this spinach has been washed. Some spinach you need to wash. And let's chuck it on. Chuck it on. There we go, spinach. Get some more in your hand. Now the thing with spinach is, it looks absolutely huge. But when it cooks, it actually sort of shrivels up. So you actually want more on there than you think you need. Uh, I think I have got a little bit too much. We can always add some more later. Okay, here we go, and let's shut, whoo, let's shut that up. Good, right, the pizza continues to cook. 
So do we have any pieces of, pieces of advice on what, oh, I need to start the oven again. There we go, beautiful. Got a right mess going on here. So what can I do about Petunia? In my life with Petunia, what shall I do? What do you think I can do? I want to be able to tell my wife that I like to cook and tell her that, that you know, I like to cook and I should like to cook for her sometime. What do you think? Forgive but never forget. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder what that means. I mean, where do you think she is? She, uh, she wasn't around on Valentine's Day. She's not around this evening. Um, we don't talk much and I miss her dearly and I don't know what to do. Um, well, I'm sorry about opening up like this. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Let's have a look at what we've got here. So we did the olives, we did the olive oil, we did the puree, we did the tomato ketchup. Ooh, you think she should have the courtesy to cook a vegetarian meal? Well, this is the thing, she doesn't. She doesn't cook anything. She anything other than the, the same thing every single week. So perhaps I could make a... I don't know how to make the suggestion, to be honest, to say to her, you know, because I'm interested in, uh, you know, she only cooks British food. She cooks, uh, you know, shepherd pie, beef wellington, roast dinner on a Sunday. Um, and she's quite happy doing it. She does not like to make the vegetarian meals. Um, I don't know. Don't know what to do about it, to be honest. Right, let's have a little look in the oven, see how that's doing. Beautiful. Wonderful. Okay, I think we put it in. What time did we put it in? I can't bloody remember now. I don't know when we put it in. I mean, sometimes you've just got to play these things by ear. Now, um, let's get uh, something out. We're going to use a new special thing. We're going to be using this. Oh, you can't see that. This is what we're going to use in a minute. Uh, we need a plate for the pizza to go on. Oh, they've got some beautiful plates here, haven't they? Right, let's get this light on. The pizza is almost done, I think. What we're looking for is the sides to start to brown and, and the, the vegan cheese to be a little bit melted. Ah, oh, good. Right. Yes, I think that's been in for a good amount of time now. 7.49. Right, let's, let's open it up, take a look. Let's bring that out, see what the spinach is saying. See, that spinach is m wilting up quite well. Good, I think that needs another couple of minutes. Oh, that's sliding about a little bit. Oh, shit! Oh, no. No! Shit, right, now if this happens, you get your spoon and you just get that back in, there we go. That's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, good. Right, and you've got the toppings down here. You can see I've dropped some of those toppings. And the good thing about the spoon is you can actually just sort of scoop up these toppings, place them back onto the pizza. Um, that's a bit of onion. That's not going to be too hot. The fingers are going to be okay. Shit, that just went straight back off again. Um, three second rule, that's it, Carl. Well done. I guess you watched my uh, cereal show in which I dropped something. And... Um, Three second rule, indeed. Remember, this is very, very hot here. Um, right, that's gone right down into the crevice there. Right, this bit, I'm just gonna shove that off onto the side. Um, yeah, you can see that's gone right in there. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right, I think once I close that, that probably Sort of come out a little bit. No, nope, that's still there. Okay, well, let's not worry too much. We'll sort that out later. Got some on the floor there. Now that's gone way beyond the three second rule. This is gone, this is dead. If, if it's a good, that's over about four seconds now, that. And, um, yep, that's, that's done for. 
So, put that in the bin. Let's give it a couple more minutes and then we'll, uh, we'll actually eat some. What I like to put on my pizza is uh, Tabasco. Now, not everyone likes this stuff. I do. You know what? I like a bit of spice in my life and on my pizza. Love a bit of spice. Do you like spice? You know, Petunia, she does not like spice. She hates spice. She doesn't want it. She doesn't want vegetarian meals or any meal cooked by me, apparently, or even my company recently. Um, but that's just that, isn't it? And now I've dropped some of my pizza onto the floor. And I'm alone again. But I am at my friend's house and I could, oh, look, look at this. So here's what's happened to the ingredients. They have fallen through the door and out the bottom here. So that's okay, we'll get the spoon. These are way beyond the three second rule now, so we can just pull these out. And they've just flopped onto the floor there. Way beyond the, good, they've come out of the oven. Now these haven't really cooked, these are all on the floor. Way beyond the three second rule, such a shame. I do not like waste. If you look at that uh, spinach now, you can see that's quite nicely cooked. But, um, and it's now been on the floor. Lord knows what's been on this floor. At least Stephen hasn't been on this floor. They don't have a dog here. In my home, we've got Stephen the dog and he will leave hair all over the floor. Oh goodness. Now I got Stephen the dog because Petunia wanted a dog. I said, no, I don't really like dogs, but if you want one, Petunia, we can have a dog. So maybe I can use that as some kind of leverage. I can say, you know, we got a dog. Can, can you allow me to cook now? I'd, I'd like to cook for you. Um, yes. Right, I think she thinks that uh, it's a female's job to cook. Uh, I think that it's fine for women to cook um, and men to cook. I think both of us should cook. We should all cook. Um, I'm not a feminist, but I do, I do believe in equality. So I think we should all be cooking, all of us. Um, and I'd like to be able to cook for us as well, me and Petunia. Okay, I think it's done now. I'm going to activate the stop button. Here we go, stop. It's quite an interesting oven. It has a stop and start button. Right, let's have a look at the pizza. Ah, oh, that smells fantastic. Let's have a look at that now. The pizza is done. Let's uh, get that out of the oven. Yes. That looks very good. You can see the spinach has wilted. You can see the vegan cheese has melted. And you can see the, that everything is quite nicely, thoroughly cooked there. Now, I've got a plate. Usually I would heat my plate, but quite frankly, I cannot be bothered. I'm just going to put it here. Um, I'm going to use my spoon. Spoon might not be the best system here, but I am not, um, I'm not in my own home. I tell you what, what I'm going to use is a pair of scissors. You might not have used a pair of scissors for pizza before, but I'm going to. So here we go. Petunia would not like this. She would be saying, what on earth are you doing, George? Pizza is not, you don't use. Well, she might be right, actually. This is not going terribly well. You know, do not use a scissors for the pizza here. Um, yeah, no, that's really not working. I am going to use the pizza, but yes, Petunia, you were probably right about, what about this? Let's give this a go, shall we? That looks like it could do the trick. I think I'm going to put you on a tripod. There we go. Right, so I'm going to use this now. This should be a lot better. Scoop underneath the pizza, lift from underneath, and there we have it. Flop it on, and there is the vegan, gluten-free pizza made by me, George Coburn, in the George Coburn cooking show. 
Now I'm going to try it with this. Here's my big tip. What you want to do is you want to cut, cut the pizza. This is amazing. This is excellent. Let's put, put it down. This is how you cut a pizza. You get your scissors and you cut all the way through it. It's quite floppy, I have to say. It's not the first time I've said that. Here we go. But you know what? I like a bit of sog. If you know me, you know that I like a bit of sog. Um, I had soggy cereal. And I don't mind a bit of floppy pizza every now and then. That's fine by me. It's not about the flop. For me, it's about the taste. So here we go. Now I'm going to try a little bit for you now. Let's put this on selfie mode. I'm going to pick up some of this pizza and I'm going to try it. Let's try, I've never tried vegan pizza before, let's give it a go. Never tried vegan gluten free pizza before and here I am about to do it. I'm going to lift it up. Um, yes, here we go. Look. There's a nice quarter slice, quite big. You can have smaller if you like. You can see the cheese is melted, so that's quite pleasing. I didn't know if it was going to melt being vegan cheese and all, but yes, it smells delightful. Oh shit, pepper fell off there. Okay, I'm going to eat some. Mm. Well, that is absolutely delicious. Simply divine. I honestly don't think I've ever tasted a pizza that before. I'm very, very good. The cheese is sumptuous. The olive on top, the olive oil, that's really cooked the ingredients nicely. And that is, the spinach is, oh. Yes, that's very good. Um, now, while this is hot, I'm going to share it with my friends, uh, Julietta and Jean-Pierre. And I thank them for letting me use their house and their beautiful kitchen. Let's have a look around. I'm going to do some cleaning now. I'm going to eat this pizza with my good friends, Julietta and Jean-Pierre. Um, I don't know what to do about Petunia. Um, if you have any ideas, do send me a message. Um, thank you very much for joining me live on the live George Coburn cooking show. Um, thank you very much. Subscribe, like, uh, put some hot sauce on your pizza if you like. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Carl Pack. Pa Carl Pack. Carl Pack. Carl Peck. Thank you very much, Carl Peck. Good name you have there, Carl. A lot of good Carls in the world. Um, here you go. Here's how you. Oh, just got a, the Tabasco is so hot, it's burning my hand. Now I put a bit of Tabasco on there and I'll try this bit. Phenomenal. That's the best pizza I have ever tasted. That's very hot. That is very hot. Um, I'm going to get some water now to cool down my mouth. That's really hot. Bloody hell. Okay, great, I'm going. Goodbye. Thank you, Tom Conway. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Thank you very much. Good night, world. I wish you all the best. Lots of love, peace and love. Um, see you next week. Next week, I would like to do a dessert. The George Coburn Cooking Show. Peter, this is the end. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Um, yes, I'm bloody sure.